Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all having a great day and that you're all doing well to start things off. The crypto solutions provider known as RSX is planning to launch a Litecoin futures contracts by the end of this year. At the same time, the firm is expected to offer Bitcoin, Bcash, and Ether futures as well. In a recent blog post released by RSX, they said they will be offering cryptocurrency futures for Bitcoin, Litecoin, Bcash, and Ether in order to be able to ensure institutional members can process these futures contracts using their existing back office workflows. RSX worked with FIS to make sure the exchange and clearinghouse are supported by FIS services at the moment. Many futures market intermediaries are already working with FIS to gain data-driven insights and scale their businesses. So, uh, not that I'm shocked at this one. It's more of a uh, Litecoin thus far in the news hasn't been as prominent. And I know that people are going to scream at me because I mentioned something like this before for another coin. Uh, if you watch the channel daily, if you look at the cryptocurrency newses that we go through... Uh, you know that Litecoin isn't in the news as often as XRP, as Ether, as Bitcoin, or even uh, Tron 50-50, give or take. Uh, I kind of expected this, but I wonder exactly how popular it will be. I think we've gotten to the point in the cryptocurrency market where we have integrated just enough with the traditional financial market that people are still looking for ways to be able to bring things from the old markets into the cryptocurrency space. And one of the main things that has kind of caught on seems to be at the moment of uh, futures contracts. I assume that these will not be physically settled Litecoin futures contracts. I assume these will definitely be in fiat. However, the fact that they are trying to, I guess, test and or gauge interest by institutional investors. Uh, if they want, Litecoin futures will probably be a... Very strong indication as to what Litecoin will be doing sometime in the future, i.e. if it picks up and other people start to catch on as well. There's money to be made from this, therefore they'll also launch the exact same thing. However, uh, we've seen before that launching futures of any type can be used to short the market, that is to say to bet against it. And that we've seen uh, evidence that potentially some of the futures markets that we have out there have been used to manipulate the price of Bitcoin to move it down. But then that also leads us to a discussion as to why they could be manipulating. Are they trying to buy Bitcoin on the side? Is it just an effort to push the price down? Or is it simply that uh, they see a future in Litecoin as it is one of the top coins and therefore they're just trying to make a secondary market of it outside of uh, just the normal cryptocurrency market and being able to buy, sell, and hold Litecoin. This also follows the news that we had a couple of days ago uh, that the CFTC chair said that he assumes that some company will offer Ether futures likely by the, by 2020. I assume Eris X is trying to do this by the end of this year so they get in before everybody else. It'll be fascinating to see. And I mean as far as uh, will there be interest? How much interest will there be? And will people simply use this to uh, short and or bet against and or lower and or manipulate the price of a light coin even lower. It'll be uh, interesting to see, and I give it about a year. Next up, some interesting things here. The number of daily XRP transactions is on the verge of hitting an all-time high. According to the crypto data tracker BitInfo Charts, the number of XRP transactions on the ledger hit 1.63 million on Monday, just short of an all-time high of 1.7 million the previous high was hit back in january 2018 at the height of the crypto market's last parabolic bull run there's a the little chart right there the xrp explorer from xrpl.org shows many of the transactions are ious being sent across the ledger the xrp ledger features a built-in decentralized exchange with an iou system that's designed to give people a way to trade any type of asset electronically the iou transfers have triggered speculation on reddit reddit <laughs> reddit <laughs> that ripple or another company is currently giving the feature a test drive the iu transactions are presented in the image below there's a whole bunch of numbers and dots the really interesting part is that here's a little chart right here uh 
over the last 24 hours of all the cryptocurrency transactions that have taken place, um, XRP is above 50% of all the transactions that have happened across the entirety of the cryptocurrency space. Who knows why, but I'm pretty sure people are going to speculate the number two. Well, it's actually Ether is number two. Bitcoin is the dark blue, and then it's followed by SV. Forgive me, uh, but we had news about a month or two ago that uh, all of the transactions, no, no, sorry. It was, it was 98% of transactions happening on Bitcoin SV are coming from a weather app. What have you. Uh, the point is, is that we've seen, and I've mentioned at the end of other videos before, that we're seeing a, a very interesting uptick in the volume of XRP on a daily basis. It seems like the people, my, just, just a kind of high feel. It feels like the people from Ripple have gotten a bit more comfortable in their skin and as far as exactly what they're doing as as far as like giving out news the new commercial that they just had which apparently i haven't seen it which is apparently cool it has tons of views and stuff like that um quite fascinating i i would like to see this translate into something we know that companies behind the scenes are using testing dealing with XRP and Ripple and so and so and so and all their other products. Uh, but the uptick over the last couple of weeks is quite interesting. I, I, I had a couple of other news things around here as well. I decided not to add them. It was more like uh, people speculating based on this jump and usage that we're seeing over the last couple of months of XRP that the price of XRP could be getting ready for a, a massive movement, but that's that's always just hyper speculation. We've seen stuff like this before and prices haven't really moved, not specifically with XRP. It's more like a um, other coins have had massive amounts of volume. Nothing has really moved. However, uh, the amount of activity that's happening on the actual XRP ledger is far above where it was even around like summertime. Anyway, that's the XRP news. And let's move on. Here's a, an actually fascinating one. Distributed ledger technology provider IOTA, Dell Technologies, and the Linux Foundation are collaborating on a project known as Alvarium. In an October 28th press release, the nonprofit Linux Foundation announced it would be forming a new project with support from several major industries giants such as Dell, IOTA and IBM other partners to the project include Edge Resource Marketplace Mobile Edge X and global IT firm Unisys. The project, based on code from Dell Technologies, aims to build on the concept of a data co confidence fabric, which establishes measurable trust and confidence in data coming from multiple sources. The system would score data based on its trustworthiness and its reliability. Dell CTO Jason Shepard said that the score data trustworthiness could help organizations meet different compliance requirements like the European Union's General Data Protection Regulation. We've seen, uh, first off the bat, the IOTA team has had a healthy amount of partnerships this year. Even if it's just a collaboration, they're still in the news a lot more than I would have expected them to ever be, especially over the course of cryptocurrency prices going down. We've seen an enormous amount. It's been over about anywhere from five to 10 at this point, the amount of partnerships that they've gotten over the last couple of months. Uh, the fact that they are now working with Dell and Linux is also quite huge. Uh, from my perspective, as far as how many other coins do you know are working with Dell or Linux, kind of just to put that into, uh, and also apparently with IBM as well is also part of this. Uh, very few coins have partnerships, very few coins have active partnerships, and very few coins are able to get names this big. Side note, I'll always, as always, not financial advice, I don't even hold IOTA. I think this is what they're doing is, is quite fascinating in how they're building themselves. Uh, the other topic, the thing that stood out the most is that this is going to be to help organizations, trustworthiness, compliance, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and it says the European Union General Data Protection Regulation. I assume that this is also part of a European type of collaboration because thus far, what we've seen IOTA focusing on has been European electronic companies, European uh, machine manufacturers, European 
car makers and I guess now also data protection regulation so and so and so and so. I would not be shocked at this point with the major names that IOTA has, speculation, that they have, I don't want to say a partnership with a country, but that a country would have come forward or contacted them and told them we would like to build our laws or digital infrastructure on top of your what is it called not a tether uh their blockchain thing i can't remember the name of it it has a very odd scloop no it's like a scale scale whatever i can't think of the name i'm gonna get it the moment the, the, the video is over and i'm gonna like be really upset with myself nope I thought i had it it's gone anyway um it's very cool. I like what they're doing. Uh, me and Iota were not friends for a very long time. But the fact that they're doing all of this stuff, and, and I, I, I find it even more perplexing that the price hasn't moved at all. Like, Iota doesn't really get a lot of, like, even the other day we were looking at the actual 24-hour um, volume, and it was like 1.5 million. Not 100 million, not 500 million, not even a billion. It was 1.5 million. Hopefully they continue doing whatever they're doing. Uh, at least they figured out a market that no one else is really trying to acquire or permeate into. So good on them. Here's the actual announcement right here from the Linux Foundation. Next up, of course, uh, China's been in the news the last. There's a fly and I'm going to freak out. Uh, it's like, anyway. Uh, China's been in the news a lot the last couple of days because of everything that's been going on. Huang Quifan, vice chairman of the China Center for International Economic Exchange or the CCIEE, I -E, yeah, I said it right, says he doesn't think the Facebook-led Libra stablecoin project will be successful. That would leave the door open to the country's central bank to create a powerful government-backed digital currency on the world stage. Huang says People's Bank of China is getting closer to launching its blockchain-enabled financial technology and will most likely make China the world's first country to issue a usable digital currency. Huang, whose comments came during the inaugural Bund Financial Summit of 2019 held in Shanghai, still going on now apparently, according to a report by Pan Daily, says that the existing infrastructure used by enterprises, enterprises for payments and settlements must be updated. Uh, the interesting part is here. Huang points out that the international liquidity of the Chinese yuan still depends heavily on SWIFT, the global leader in facilitating secure market bank-to-bank -bank messages, and CHIPS, the clearinghouse interbank payment system. He also claims that the two financial systems are used by the United States to control the global economy. He says SWIFT is outdated, inefficient, and a costly payment system. Since the establishment of SWIFT 46 years ago, the technology has been updated slowly and the efficiency has been relatively slow. International wire transfers usually take three to five days to arrive. The other important part was here. By leveraging SWIFT, the U.S. can achieve political objectives and maintain control over the global financial system. For example, in 2017, the U.S. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin threatened to block China from the financial system if it didn't abide by new North Korea sanctions. So, we are most certainly going to see this coin launched relatively soon. You, one does not typically, as a country, uh, you don't bite the hand that feeds you, or you don't bite the hand that gives you food or that allows you to open up the fridge. Kind of the easiest way to say it. Uh, we have seen other countries mentioned before that they don't like certain systems, but you never usually um, lash out as much as China has done the last couple of months, I kind of want to say. There was something, remember a couple of years ago, for those of you who actually remember, I don't even, I, I think I spoke about it on the channel for at least about four or five seconds, but years and years ago, it had to be 2013, 14, 15, 16, somewhere around that time frame, can't give you an exact date, sorry. Uh, where I believe it was Germany, France, China, Russia, some Southeast Asian countries, they were trying to make an alternative banking worldwide so-and-so system that wouldn't rely on the U.S. anymore. I think that entire thing got shut down, you know, by who? There was also a situation about a year or two ago where China was trying to, I guess that was what the 
uh, what the little threat here was for, where China was trying to um, increase the value of their currency to make it stronger and to make other to make it more appealing to other countries to hold their currency as opposed to holding the U.S. dollar. I think that was also shut down, and this is probably why we saw the beginning of the uh, the trade war that we currently have right now. I, I it's not even an assumption. Logically, if you're creating a new currency or a digital currency, I assume they have other major, um, what's the word? Countries on their side. They've probably been having very long discussions about the creation of this. If we create it, will you accept it? Are you creating your own? And can our systems work interoperably? Because the last thing that China wants to do, or any country, is to talk about we're going to make our own system and only you and your friends, or rather even just you and your country, can use it and nobody else. This is the problem that they had in, in Venezuela, where they created their own cryptocurrency and they had discussions with other countries and nobody wanted to accept it because it's garbage. Uh, two things are probably, maybe three things. A couple of paths that we're going to walk down in the next couple of years. And I think it'll take about a good five years for us to be able to reflect on what we're seeing right now to give it a better picture. I think the two largest roads... Our China creates their own coin, which is going to happen relatively soon. And it becomes so big that they begin to take dominance from other countries. And other countries start to create their own coins as well as a response to this. And then we see this type of really weird, dystopian, interoperable, governmental, uh, crypto coin based project thing where everyone in the entire world is... Uh, told to use and or running on government-backed currencies, uh, as, as, in, as in digital currencies more than anything. The second road is, uh, which I think has as equally as large a chance, is that governments begin to create their cryptocurrencies. They work out for a bit, but somewhere along the way, as we've already been getting, not even breadcrumbs, we're getting ent entire loaves of bread the last year or two, that governments have also been acquiring and accumulating Bitcoin. We know that the, I think the FBI has some. Uh, what's the other major organization that who, like they've been, um, they've been taking it from people who they say have done illegal and or illicit activities. So one can assume they still definitely have a healthy portion of it. We know that probably Russia has some, China controls 81% of all the Bitcoin mining, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, down, so, somewhere, somewhere down the road, Bitcoin becomes so big that it ends up becoming its own reserve for countries, which is what many economists think will eventually happen. As, as we go further and further along, they're not expecting it to happen within the next year, but they think within the next 8 to 12 years, we'll see certain countries coming forward talking about that they need to start relying on Bitcoin as an actual hedge or something just to lean on because it's, it's more safer and more secure than their current thing, which is also what we saw last year with the three countries who went to the International Monetary Fund and said, hey, we need to start issuing Bitcoin bonds. That's definitely going to happen as well. Either way, it's expected, and many economists don't say this, because I think if you, if you say things like this out loud, especially on CNBC, Fox News, wherever you get your financial news from, you look crazy. If you talk about the, the end of SWIFT, which is what we've been using for almost 50 years, or even the, the, the end of the economic dominance of the U.S. dollar, which I think is also fascinating as well. There was, it had to be on one of Laura Shin's. Uh, she, she does Unchained and Unconfirmed podcasts. And I think it had one of her last two ones, she was discussing with someone the actual end of the dominance of the U.S. dollar. And they were like, yeah, we, we know it's going to happen at some point. Like nothing lasts forever. It's just more of a matter of what's going to do it. And it looks like right now, uh, that every as as every other country comes to the conclusion that you don't have to rely on one country telling you exactly what to do. This is what makes I mean, Bitcoin is is neutral. It can be used for good and evil, but it's more the fact that imagine a situation you don't even have to imagine because it's true, where someone controls everything that you do and everything that you say, and you can simply just acquire something else. You and thirty five of your other friends. And you can send and transact value between you and you know, each other without actually having to worry about anybody else or having to worry about some big brother or whatever saying that you can't do that. So um, I think we're going to see both of them. I'm leaning more towards the Bitcoin side, not Bitcoin being the only currency, but like being incredibly dominant in the world of finance. 
as the, as the years come on, especially I, I, I don't see it being used as much, at least now, uh, for like daily transactions. I don't think that's going to happen, but I think countries will definitely be swapping Bitcoin between themselves to be able to transact value in some sort of way without having to go through another intermediary, which is going to lead us to a very um, interesting economic prospect over the next couple of years uh, when there is maybe not just one uh, country dominating and controlling everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was also, I, I don't know if it was this guy, but there was someone yesterday as well who was like making fun of of the current financial system. He was from China. I'm, I'm pretty sure. He was talking about the like, like, not that the end was going to come soon, but like soon is going to be our time to shine. And he was like making fun of other systems. It was it was very odd. Like what's been happening in the last couple of days. There was also some, what was the thing that just happened? People have to like pledge their allegiance to blockchain or something. It's, it's a very weird, I, I, I don't know what's going on, but the last week has been kind of odd. Anyway. Let's move on. To kind of finish things off, San Francisco-based crypto exchange Kraken is apparently listing Omise Go and Pax Gold tokens. According to a blog post on the 28th of October, the exchange's users will be able to deposit, withdraw, and trade both assets starting today. Kraken will roll out trading pairs between Omise Go and Pax Gold and Bitcoin and Ether as well as with fiat currencies such as the euro and the US dollar. Amise Go is a finance-oriented scaling network for Ethereum and is powered by the Ethereum-based OMG token at press time. Amise Go has a market cap of around $150 million and is trading at around $1.06. Not exactly sure how accurate that $1.06 is right now, but I know that Amise Go did go up on this news. Uh, it's very far and few in between that we actually get any type of Omise Go news. I still like Omise Go. For those of you who are wondering, I still hold Omise Go. I have not sold. People keep asking me. I mean, I, I, I guess it's just basic curiosity. If I have sold anything, I do not sell. I have numbers in my head where I think prices are going to go. I will not say them out loud uh, for the sake of not having anyone else use or choose my numbers. Should my numbers be incorrect, I don't want anybody else to lose any money. And also because I don't want to sound crazy. I assume a lot of these coins are going to go to very nice prices whenever the market does go back up. I do not hold an enormous amount of altcoins. The ones that I do hold, I do believe in them. So, uh, while the Omisego team does not give us an enormous amount of news, I still remain hopeful that at some point relatively soon we should be getting some type of plasma news. Uh, Plasma being another scaling solution for the Ethereum network that we were told about in 2017 and should have gotten in 2018. And as you all know, it's almost 2020. Anyway, Kraken's adding Omise Go and Pax Gold Coin to their platform. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Professor Wally from Gunbot University, Todd Mullis, Adam Graysick, Mohe Maroney, Master Ventures in Thailand, Brady Neils, Woody and Daisy, Triple M and J.E., Jared Schneider, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Crypto Joe, Bankroll Network, Adobo, Mill Weezy, Mechanic, Strange Radio Central, Crypto Artist, Coldy 3D, Cryptopolis, Nicholas, Renault, One Piece, One Love, Damien, Setsuna, Nick, Kanaya, Richie Rich the Third, Vlad the Impaler, Crypto, Beer Shipmate, Paxis, Nick, Mangialavori, Anthony Charles, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller, Hitch, Chest, Every Day, and Kyle Skips, Leg Day, Yes, to Crypto, and Bodie McBoatface. Thank you all very, very much for your support. At the moment, everything is interesting. Uh, volatility is still there, which is great. I read a couple of articles that said that people think that Bitcoin could be on its way down. Uh, never forget, we had those same exact articles when Bitcoin was at 7,200, talking about that Bitcoin was on its way down to 6,000. And here we are right now at 9,400. Nobody knows where the prices will go. However, uh, I saw people saying that they think that the market, not that it ran out of steam, uh, it could be due for another move downward in an attempt to move back up. Ether is still currently up because of the, the sentiment of the future soon to be release of Ethereum 2.0. Uh, Bcash is up. Who, who knows why? Uh, no one's using it. I can show you articles that shows nobody's using it. Uh, but alas, it's still there. I think Tron is one of the very few coins that's actually still up a lot. Air quotes. 
uh, based on the China news, many of the other China coins have um, gone down. Neo being one of them. IOTA's up. Cool. I, even, the, even the trading volume's up. Okay, a whole 18 million more. That's nice to see. Nothing else is doing anything uh, hyper significant. Yeah, many of, like, like I said, many, many of the air quote China coins are down. Quantum's also down. Uh, Omise goes up by 10%. Always nice to see. I hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are. Wherever you might be, I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.